Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company and Primary Arms. This show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matt LaRosier, and I'm on here with my co-host, Sean Heron. Once again, Sean, how are you doing? Man, I'm so tired right now. I don't even know why. Like, ever since Saturday, tell me if anyone else is having this. Ever since Saturday, I can't sleep past 5 a.m. I... so I've been tired as hell, but it's been, it's been because for like the past few months, I won't go to sleep until after 4 a.m. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to bed about midnight, but I, I'm like midnight one every morning. I don't know what it is. And I'm waking up at one, three and five. So only odd numbers. If anyone else out there is, is bearing this affliction. Sounds like a curse. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck cursed me? Oh, I can't <laughs> even say that. Uh, let's see. Timestamp at 54 yeah, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry ben anyway uh yeah so i think i'm yeah, cursed ben, he said the fuck word <laughs> and you have to beep it a bunch of fucking times one minute nine <laughs> one minute twelve <laughs> and now it's me like shooting perfect yeah no yeah well i have to now i'll have to beep it too but yeah. um funny story anyway. the people that listen to this week in guns hate we like shooting really yeah a lot of them well, they, I love you this well, week in guns, people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I feel like that's like a double burn. Uh, uh, it's not intended as such. It's intended as audience appreciation. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah. anyway, so yeah, like I, I promise we're going to start one episode without talking about the weather and it's hard. I right? didn't. I know. I know. I'm just saying it's hard. Yeah. Because I so desperately want to say you're wearing a t-shirt this time, but I'm not going to say it. Well, there's like eight (laughs) inches of snow outside. We got dumped on last night. (laughs) But you turned the heater on. I turned the heater on earlier, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, it was good to go. All right, so let's get straight into it. There's something really stupid to start out with. Um, Yeah, something really stupid about smart guns. So there's all these computer nerds out there. And they, you know, you give them a couple pieces of AI, they write a couple fake episodes of Seinfeld, right? And now all of a sudden they think they can solve all the world's problems. Have you ever read those, by the way? <laughs> These supposedly AI generated like Seinfeld episodes? Yes, and they're like, actually quite wonderful. <laughs> they are, and I, but I don't believe that they're actually AI generated, but if they are, they're, they're great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so a group of researchers from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York, they recently published a paper detailing the potential of AI intervention to prevent mass shootings. Hmm. A so-called ethical lockout for firearms. And so, yeah, we check this out. This was posted on um, the, the next web neural, a human centric AI news and analysis page. And so basically you read all this stuff and, you know, they're saying that uh, the detractors are saying, oh, the technology is not there, but these, these guys in favor of it are saying it absolutely is there. And that's because their approach is kind of like hitting it with a massive hammer. Like their example is like, you know, oh, you know, a, wall, a mass shooting could happen in a Walmart parking lot. Well, if the gun knows there's only certain places that it could be fired, then it just won't work because it's in the Walmart parking lot. And they say this in so many words. Um, see, like, uh, here's the, so here's their like example situation. The shooter is driving to Walmart, an assault rifle and a massive amount of ammunition in his vehicle. The AI we envisage knows that this weapon is there and that it can only be used for very specific purposes in very specific environments. And of course, it knows what those purposes and environments are. At Walmart itself, in the parking lot, any attempt on the part of the would-be assailant to use his weapon or even position it for use in any way will result in it being locked out by the AI. In the particular case at hand, the AI knows that killing anyone with the gun, except perhaps e.g. for self-defense purposes, is unethical. Since the AI rules out self-defense, the gun is rendered useless and locked out. Oh, heck no. Like what? That doesn't even make sense. Like, so you can only use self-defense and this takes it, this takes into account that like every, every gun in the universe has this AI, whatever built into it, which is not the case. There would always be black market stuff. So you would be unable to defend yourself and it would be utterly useless and ridiculous. And how would the AI know about all the ammunition in the car as well? And also this is not a thing that happens very often. Yeah. Um, but, but on top, I mean, but naturally you'd be using the smart ammo, um, you know, but, uh, now we got to have smart ammo. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe they just 
look, uh, it, it's obviously ridiculous. It's it's so ridiculous it, it becomes difficult to joke about. Because, <laughs> I know. You know, it, the line gets blurred between what they're actually saying and not. But I mean, as you know, whenever you and I get involved in self defense situations, we we go to the self defense shooting range. So obviously, the GPS would know that if we're not at the self defense range. It, the gun just shouldn't be on. I don't really see an issue with that. I think it's honestly, it's pretty rational. Well, okay. Well, what about this? And I don't think that they've actually, okay. I wasn't talking to you, Google. Uh, I don't think they've solved this yet, but self-driving cars. Right. So self-driving cars driving along pedestrian gets pushed out into the street, bumped out into the street, whatever it is. Car has to make the decision. Do I hit pedestrian or do I kill my occupant by, you know, crashing into a semi that's driving next to us? Mm-hmm. What what does the car choose? This has actually been written about a lot, and they've um, the companies have different ways of approaching this. Usually, they uh, will analyze like it'll be a sheer numbers game. Um, but I, and I don't have an answer for how they rule that out. But I do know that that is. Um, I don't think it's AI though. I think it's just a simple numbers game. I right? think so. I think so too. But the problem with it is until it chooses me no matter what, as the occupant of the car, like, I don't yeah. want it. Like, it's not right. interesting to me at all. Like, I don't ever want it to be like, oh, it's a numbers game. Sorry, you're, you're, you're right. screwed, buddy. Well, and also, like, so that it takes out all of the split-second decision-making that a human is able to process, right? So I don't think a computer could understand that maybe somebody – two guys were jumping out in front of a car as which happens here in my home country of Florida quite often for insurance reasons. Yeah. They, you know, like they do that. <laughs> they jump out in front of cars to get hit. And, uh, you know, if it's, so if it, if it decides that, you know, it's, Oh, the person is, is younger than, than, you know, looks younger than the driver. So I'm going to choose that. But, you know, that, that doesn't take into account that this is an obvious insurance scam, right? And that the value of an insurance scammer is less than the person who bought you computer. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I totally agree with that. And I'm like, honestly, until it chooses mm-hmm. occupant of car over every single other thing. And listen, if a human dri- was driving, like they just might have a reaction and it may right. not be a conscious thought. They may do the wrong thing. They may end up killing everybody, right. but it doesn't matter. Like it does not matter because until it chooses me over everything else, then I don't ever want to put, and, and I'm way down with like tech. Like I want us to have self-driving flying cars, uh, but it needs to make that choice. And I don't ever want a computer or an AI to make the choice without the context of human reaction, human response in the context of the situation. And like, it'll right. never be able to do that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm freaked out by it. I, I mean, obviously like in even the people, the researchers here say, they say it's a blue sky idea, but I mean, we have come so far as already like they are right though. The technology is already there for them to just cock up guns and make them completely useless. Um, <laughs> like it's, so it, that is concerning, right? The technology is not there to do this well, but the technology is there to make your gun useless. Yeah. I mean, we, so. we've had 1911s for a long time, so <laughs> <laughs> just kidding guys, yeah. uh, send your hand. No, yeah, those, those can't be made useless. They come from the factory. That way. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> oh boy. I'm just kidding. They were a great design 109 years ago. I, I have um, several 1911s. I love them. I have one. You should have more. Everyone needs multiple. Because the, I want to, yeah, I want a Delta Elite. That's what I want. Oh, wow. All right. I mean, if I'm going to want one. Right? Yeah, you might as well get the expensive one. <laughs> Are they that expensive? I don't know. I mean, they're not quite like, you know, I know that there's all these Gucci 1911s, but I just think it's a cool piece of 80s. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we've, we've padded our 1911 lovers in the audience enough. But yeah, okay, this is, okay. it's, it's ridiculous. It's, um, I, but it is good to know that they're out there in the open, like thinking about crap like this. Um, yeah. And they even, they even talk about the Teslas. Yeah. It, and it says here at the end, it's likely that just like Tesla's AI, a gun control AI could result in accidental and unnecessary deaths, but approximately 24,000 people die annually, annually in the U S due to suicide by firearms. 1,500 children are killed by gun violence and almost 14,000 adults are murdered with guns. It stands to reason an AI intervention could significantly decrease those numbers. 14,000 adults is a statistical anomaly in deaths in the United States. Like, yeah. Why are we? So, yeah, no, go work on that Tesla thing some more and get that number down because that's where people actually die is, is, you know, we're, you know, we're all 200 pound 
like squishy sacks of beef yeah. that, that drive around in like you know thousands of pounds of steel traveling through space. That's the that's the real uh, place for y'all to be playing around. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like spend your thought processes on things that actually are dangerous to to the country. Yep, not mm-hmm. made up nonsense. Right. Oh, speaking of that, this is just a funny aside. Um, I had a um, and I don't know why it dovetails into this, but I thought of it. I had a telehealth um, meeting with my doctor today, and uh, as you know, they don't want you to actually come in. I just needed a new prescription, so they're like, "Oh, we'll see you on video." I'm like, "Oh, perfect, yeah, I'm right here at my desk." And then they send me a they send me a link to log in, and I just go, "Damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> the first thing my doctor says is, "It's a lot of guns." <laughs> I was right here. Yeah, but I was just like. <laughs> I'm a gun rights lawyer. Please don't like red flag me. <laughs> yeah. Do anything weird. This is, but that's, that's, that's like, you know, I'm down with tech and stuff like that, but that was one thing that I was uncomfortable about. It's like, listen, doc, I love you, but just yeah, ignore the nice things on my wall. Please yeah. and talk to me about my pills. Mind your, mind your business. First yeah. of all, <laughs> that's a lot of guns. Why? Yes. <laughs> oh, you. if you only knew, <laughs> <laughs> for you <laughs> oh man but no i love my doctor and i hope they don't bother me yeah don't reflect um, me bro yeah so next up did you hear about this thing the tommy built thing yes i have so this is something that's um it's it's kind of weird uh you know the tommy built t36 it's the u.s made uh facsimile of a g36 mm-hmm. he's been making it for quite a while it's quite expensive, so a lot of people don't have them. Yeah. I don't have one. I'm not interested in paying that amount for, for what it is. But So he copied the lockout. Um, and for those of you who don't know, because our ATF is a bad thing, uh, they will sometimes get companies to do weird, arbitrary stuff to guns to make sure that you can't force full auto parts into it and make it run the way God intended. Um, so... Tom, Tom Bostet, the owner, he copied the already approved way that HK was doing this with the SL8, which is the civilian HK made uh, G36 facsimile. Yep. So naturally, he thinks that's all, all right. Then this week, he or was it late last week? Either way, recently he posts this thing on his website, this letter of explanation that basically says in, in somewhat cryptic terms that the T-36 receiver will now be classified by, as a machine gun, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, basically says, send in your receiver and he'll re, um, kind of like rejigger it to make it less readily convert- convertible, which again, I- I've said this a hundred times, the law doesn't require anything about readily convertible. The law says readily restored. And so if this thing was made as a semi-auto, I like think it's ridiculous and intentionally made right to not be convertible, which it was. It's it's ridiculous this whole thing. And so I went digging. I haven't found any ATF letters. I haven't found anything that that shows that they've actually done anything. But I found a post that um, was made, and people were discussing this. Where basically the contention is another company was trying to import the HK two forty three, which is a civilian legal European market G thirty six. But it's just like a straight up G36 without the auto series and stuff in it. And ATF told them, no, you can't, it's a machine gun. And <laughs> apparently that company got upset and said the T36 is the same thing. So ATF came and he showed them, look, no, it's not. It, I copied this other thing. Then <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah, no problem. They took one for evaluation. So apparently he gets a letter, not a cease and desist, not a determination letter, but a letter saying that. They managed to, like, cut up a German full-auto group and then beat a full-auto bolt carrier into it. With a hammer. Yeah, and then force it to get a couple of rounds off in full-auto. So they are now of the position that it's going to be a machine gun. I think this is a bunch of crap. Yeah, and, okay, so a couple of things. I saw some direct quotes from him. I was actually looking for him just now. I can't find the direct quotes, but I remember enough to paraphrase. Uh, He had a couple agents show. So he got this approved two years ago. He has Mm -hmm. a letter saying it was approved. He had a couple agents show up. They said it's no longer approved. It's readily converted to a machine gun. 
He said, what, what are you guys talking about? Like, is, is there a report? They said, yes, there's a report. He said, okay, I need to see this. They said, no, you can't see this. He said, well, okay, well, I need something that tells me that this is actually a thing. And they said, nope. Uh, but we were yep. able to hammer a full auto trigger pack, which I actually just looked at gun broker and you cannot get the full auto trigger packs, not even on gun broker, not even no right. law letter, not even like anything. They're like not there. So something that's almost impossible to find. Yep. And they hammered it in. And then he said, okay, well, it, I guarantee that it may have shot once, but it would never, ever, it won't do another shot. It's like you're going to jam everything up in there. And they said, well, we don't know the details on that. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, this is the biggest load of horse caca yeah. that I've ever heard. I think it's just a bunch of crap. And, uh, and like he, this is, or, you know, he was, I found him talking too. he was saying like, he basically chose to just deal with it um, rather than fighting in court. And this, this really makes me upset because like, I understand, you know, he's, you know, he's a fairly small shop. He's, he's you know, he doesn't necessarily have the money to, to, to fight it or whatever, but this is the kind of crap that it just like, we wind up getting just bent over, over this garbage because none of the companies are willing to stand up. And I mean, I understand. I'm not like saying that like, oh, he should have put everything down on the line. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wish he did. Um, or I wish he had like, you know, well, he's in Florida. I wish, I mean, if he had called me, I would talk to him, but, um, this is this is the kind of crap that is that is how non-law becomes applied to us because he sent out this thing to everybody and he's saying that like oh if you don't hand it in you're gonna they're gonna come get it this is gonna all happen and and we don't have any evidence of that now to his credit i'm sure he has reason to believe all this stuff like i and i'm sure look they don't usually do it for no reason they're probably going to decide to to mess with them but i just can't believe that all these people who bought a semi-automatic gun that was intentionally made to be semi-automatic are even thinking about this. Like it, it should not, that, that shouldn't be in, in the pale because for one, you have to intend to violate the NFA, right? Like to be convicted. Right. Um, and just the idea that just like, but just, just think about that. This isn't that he assembled G 36s from full auto parts. No, he sat there made it semi-auto intentionally made it so that you had to like you couldn't just put the stuff in so they had to modify and then beat in the full auto parts and then they're like oh, this is machine gun. yeah like, absolutely ridiculous this is absolutely ridiculous I, can't, I i'm furious that they're getting away with it um they they shouldn't this is like i don't know something should be done they need to be sued over this uh th this is this is preposterous because now is the time to bring these types of lawsuits when the court is vaguely in, in favor of the Second Amendment, when the court is, um, you know, questioning all of these agency actions that are beyond the, the pale of law. Now is the time to do it. But this is what happens. They pick on people. They pick on the little guys and push them around. And then everybody else kind of start kind of, you know, falls in line because they don't want to get picked on. This is a game. They're playing a game. And, um, it's a travesty. Yeah, and he still has no uh, definitive like report, proof, letter, anything because that's actionable. And he is replacing them for a little bit over two hundred dollars, which is apparently yeah, which is well under his cost. So he's losing a bunch of money. It's a small business like this. This could close him down. And yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a mess. It's um, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know. I hope someone can get something together and. Uh, th th this is the type of stuff that we as a community need to do though. We're like we see something like this, there needs to be a way, but there's of course no platform right now we could use because it would be pro gun. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we could just all throw money into a pot and be like, this is for you to get rid of this. I think this would be a great, a great choice. Yeah, man. I do. I want, if anyone knows him, like, but let yeah. us know how we can help. Yeah, no, and I'm in Florida, so there I think go. he's based in Florida. Yeah, why don't you just go show up at his at his shop and just like be knocking on the door? <laughs> isn't that isn't that what you lawyers do? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but but yeah, Tommy, you've um, you're in our our hearts and minds. We gotta someone's gotta do something about this. This is a it's such an egregious instance 
Um, and, and you think they're going to stop. It's like, it's, you know, they give a mouse a cookie thing, right? Yeah. You give a mouse a T36, he's going to come back for, you know, AKs or something. <laughs> he give me a T36. I'll, like, right. <laughs> I'll give you a back rub, <laughs> like whatever you yeah, need. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. But like, I mean, but think about that. Doing all that. So modifying a lower and then beating it in. What does it take? You know, you're an SOT. What does it take to make an AR full auto? Like nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, with a GI trigger group, you can drop in little, little easily made things. Yeah. What about that? There's no rhyme. There's no reason. Yeah. Like the, the way the law is drafted, it's actually pretty clear. And it actually makes sense. It's if you intend to do this, you know, you did it on purpose. You made it full auto on purpose. That's a problem. This thing, there's no evidence it was ever full auto. Just that they beat the crap in there. Yeah. With, with, a, with a component that you can't even get. Like it's not readily available to anybody. Right. Yeah. Nonsense. Versus with AR, AR stuff, like th- there's people who are like, you know, what, the coat hanger thing? Yeah. Yeah. I know where to get some coat hangers. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that you could 3D print stuff. Yeah. There's a, there's a Ross right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this is, that just boils my blood, man. I'm, I'm really upset. It, it, it's infuriating. Angry. I'll tell you what, we talked about this on WLS and at first I was like, man, another company trying to get around stuff. And then I was like, you know what? Hold on. Like publicly on the show. I was like, hold on. That is so ridiculously unfair of me to even say that about Tommy built. Like that is one of the dumbest things that I've said. I was like, this is not his fault. And this right. was like the day it happened. Like before any information came out, I was like, yeah. this is not his fault. Like, I don't right. even know what I was thinking. I'd completely changed my tune. Like yeah. within I saw a minute. Some people who were like, who were getting mad saying like, Oh, how could he not properly make it? Like, blah, blah, blah. dude. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not mad at him. I'm mad at the situation. I'm mad at the cost. I'm mad that he thought that, it would be too costly to, to fight. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm mad at, at the world that exists that created that situation, but like he is probably sweating his nuts yeah. off right now. Just, oh, yeah. You know, he, he's in a bad way. And you know, I think, I think we need to all get together and, and, and stand behind this guy and, and, and against this rogue bureaucracy. I totally a hundred percent agree. I'll, I'll do anything that I possibly can. Uh, yep. whether with my platforms, with my money, like whatever. And I mean, right. there's not a lot of money, but I got <laughs> yeah, like 20 already, bucks uh, in my pocket. We were, we were going to send him one of those magic eight balls. So he knows, <laughs> so he knows better about in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. No way. I got so, way more money. I thought I got like maybe a hundred bucks in my pocket. Dang. Yeah. I'll, it's all yeah. yours, Tommy. Tell yeah. me where to send it. <laughs> what do I got? I got some lint <laughs> pocket lint. Oh, there's and, even more 20s in my wallet. And I got a life card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Oh, well, actually, yours is way cooler than mine. <laughs> I got some cash, but you got some trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, all right. Um, anyway. Next story. So, yeah, next story. This is This is another charmer. So, over in Missouri, there's a bill. It's being introduced to basically remove the prohibition on carrying a firearm while you're in public transportation. So to normal people who would look at this holistically and be like, huh, you know, generally it's disadvantaged people who don't have cars and stuff that use public transport. They might have to walk down some alleys and stuff. They should have a way of defending themselves. Maybe they should be able to carry their gun with them, you know, on their way to work and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's not like that to the editors of the Kansas City Star, who are much more intelligent and probably handsome than us. Yes. See, they understand that this is simply a risk proposition that lawmakers should soundly reject. What? Uh, you know. What do you, what do you not understand? What's your problem? <laughs> uh, I- What's, what's your problem? I, I can't even articulate a response right now because I'm just going to freak out. Like of, of all the thing, you know how I feel about Jim Crow laws and like anything yeah. that, that uh, disallows the poor from defending themselves. Not even the poor. Like there was a time in my life where I rode the bus a little bit and like to tell me that I couldn't defend my life because I didn't have a car or yeah. I, I didn't have a license is what I didn't have. Uh, but to tell me that, like, are you kidding me? What What kind of nonsense is that? Like a lot of people ride the bus, uh, especially yeah. in bigger cities here. Not so much like Denver, Colorado. A lot of people ride public transportation, trains, yeah. buses, 
Well, and if you're supposedly so, like, you know, I'm sure these people are progressives. I'm sure they want people to be on, you know, these, like, more carbon neutral type uh, things, uh, which is what they're always going for public transit. How are you? Why do you want to do anything that would discourage people? From, but uh, no, I know the actual answer to that is that they view guns themselves as a societal evil. So this is the logic of the Kansas City Star people. So they point out that the legislation was filed in response to a series of very violent incidents that happened along the light rail system in um, St. Louis area. Okay. Okay. And their argument is is that that light rail system is just in St. Louis, right? So they're hanging their whole hat on these, like, this spurt of incidents that happened here. And so, of course, the legislative response was, hey, it's kind of effed up that people can't protect themselves and it's super dangerous on this thing. So why don't we let them do it? And so this is how they they conclude. St. Louis has issues that Kansas City doesn't. There is no need for a statewide law. St. Louis needs to figure it out. (laughs) I wish these guys would think like that more often, though, like... Yeah, when it comes to like federal and state laws, but yeah, then they you know they go over of course the suggestion is that more guns is the answer to this outbreak I mean, epidemic, but you um, know uh, of of all the things. Okay, first of all, you know what stops people from mugging people on the light rail, shooting them in their stupid ass faces. <laughs> That stops it. They hate that. Yeah, they hate muggers that. Muggers hate that. <laughs> this <laughs> one simple trick that all muggers hate: yeah. <laughs> shooting them in their dumb face. So yeah, this was, and they can't, you know, this is such like, they did, nobody even signed the damn article. It's by the Kansas City Star editorial board. So listen here, you bees, like stupid hive, you can't even sign an article. How, yeah. Ah, that, that always upsets me. That, Cowards. Like, that you can't, I just got one question for the Kansas City Star editorial board. Why do you hate poor people? Yeah. Also, can you don't? Yeah. yeah. How about easily just not? And stay home. Yeah. Stay I, home and stay quiet. You know what? I, I bet money that the people who wrote this article, that the people in charge at the Kansas City uh, garbage, whatever it is, uh, I bet none of them ride public transportation. Yeah. They probably drive a automobile. Yeah. What, what if they just weren't allowed to have an opinion about a thing that they don't take advantage of because they have no idea what actually is going on there and what actually any of this is? Yeah. And I mean, not to let's. And not to say that whatever St. Louis legislator does know exactly what's going on, because he probably doesn't, because he's a, a politician lizard. But, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, but this is a rational response. It's like, hey, you can carry your gun everywhere, and if you drive a car, there's no problem. But if you have to get on the bus, it's a problem. So who takes the bus? Poor people. So that means poor people can't carry their guns to work. Yeah, It's an obvious issue, right? It's an obvious issue, and it's unfair. And, like, I bet if you'd look into those high-profile violent crimes, probably poor people getting killed. Yeah, and probably gang-related, probably, like... Uh, well, who knows, right? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. Well, you know, what's, you know what's highly affiliated with gang activity? No. Low, you know, financially, disincentive, uh, financially disadvantaged areas. Yeah. It all relates to that. I mean, like, all of this, you know, if we were concerned about reducing violent crime... We would be focusing on policies that enable people to be able to freely start businesses and provide for themselves and gain a sense of value because it's proven time and time again that what drives people to violent crime is, you know, a lack of opportunity and feeling of of not belonging in society. And, you know, it's a great way to not feel like you belong in society. Being told you can't make a living. Yeah. Right. Can't make a living, can't defend yourself. But, you know, yeah. you would think that the progressive uh, left would, would be very interested because I think that uh, financially disadvantaged areas a lot of time vote Democrat. Would you agree with this? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So by letting your voters protect themselves, you end up with more voters. But I think they actually truly know that the more they let people actually take care of themselves, the more they actually give – the more responsibility that they give people, uh, the more to the right that those people will probably vote. Yeah, I mean, I – I don't have enough data to like, you know, my gut says yes, same, probably, same, right? yeah. but like, I don't have data on that, but even so, you know what? I don't even care. Right. So I, if, I it became care a, if it became a progressive leftist position to, um, give people the means to, to choose their, their own destinies, I wouldn't care if we voted in more of those, you know, uh, I might be annoyed about some other things, but you know, that's my main concern always has been and always will be the freedom of the individual to decide what happens to his life. And 
this is clearly a law that uh, harms that, and I think it's it's one that doesn't belong anymore. It should be gone. Hundred percent agree. Mm-hmm. So shut there up, we- Kansas City Star. Yeah, shut up. Go. I don't know. Go ride the bus. Ride the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if you feel weird. <laughs> they would. They would no, be like, I mean, oh, that's the thing. That's the thing. They. It's not at like, and and all of the stuff that we're saying. The problem is they would probably sit down and actually want to agree and want to discuss this if they could get past one thing, the gun, right? The elephant in the room is that these people have a very simple way of viewing firearms, and that is that they are a societal problem. They are a toxin that releases violence. It, like, oozes out a bad juice, right? And that's how they think of guns, and and that's... That's why we're at these bulkheads, because we can't get to the part of the conversation you and I just had when they're like, yeah, but we can't have like guns there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, I've ridden the light rail in Denver a couple times, and I've always been armed, and I know it's not allowed. And I made that choice because I was like, well, my life is more important than uh, getting in trouble. But do they always judge by nine, carried by six? Oh, you know what else I've never, ever seen on on the light rail? Police, security of any kind. (laughs) (laughs) You don't want to ride that? No. (laughs) Yeah, dude, no. All the times I've taken, you know, I've taken the bus. I've done, um, I've I've done it all, right? I've had to move around a lot. Like I'd be doing a speaking gig in some city. I have to get from the airport to wherever. And, you know, I'm, I'm not made of money. So I'll, I'll do whatever the cheapest way to get me there is. And so I've, you know, it's sketchy. Uh, there's only been a couple. The one place I was at where I, I was like, wow, this public transportation is dope and clean was um, Indianapolis. Yeah. That's because there's no one there, though. Yeah. It was just me and my own bus, like my own big bus. <laughs> just my- <laughs> You're like, take me there, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Indianapolis, chef's kiss. I have ridden the bus in Indianapolis, and it was very nice. I agree. Yeah, because it was just you, right? Yeah, it, well, it was me and a couple others, and uh, we rode the bus, and but then we all, we found out that you could rent those scooters everywhere for like nothing, so we rode yeah. those the rest of the time. Yeah, those yeah. those are more dangerous than riding on the bus, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. So what's your what, take your chances getting stabbed on the bus or or, or flying into a gutter? <laughs> <laughs> flying into a gutter, getting hit by a car, yeah. Yeah. running into pedestrians, all these yeah. things. Yep, a, a sand trap or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but so. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's a mess. Yeah. Next up one is is interesting, right? Because there's um, there's a lot of different factors at play here, um, and I don't think there's a good guy in this situation. Uh, so Sig Sauer is facing a lawsuit from an ICE agent, Keith Slatowski, and he's claiming that his P320 discharged on his own while he was training in a government firing range, uh, basically that it. It, it struck his hip and did all kinds of uh, damage to his thigh. I know that we've heard a lot about the things going off when they drop, and I think some of those concerns might be overstated, but what do you think about this? I don't know. I would have to see it. I got a couple things to say. First of all, the press release put out by his lawyers, Saltz, Mongaluzzi, and Bendeski. Yeah. A good name. Very, very good name. <laughs> uh, you know that they're going to get him uh, a lot of money. So it's... It, I don't know. Like, okay, we know that on some six hour P three twenties, when struck in the back of the slide extremely hard with a hammer or a drop striker. Yeah, yeah, it drops the striker. We know that. We've seen that. We've seen the video. It doesn't appear that 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 this happened here. I have seen many people uh, try to be holstering or doing something and pull the trigger or their shirt pulls the trigger or something else pulls the trigger. So as much as I would love to slam Sig Sauer in the P320 right here, I don't, yep. I don't believe it and I don't trust it at this point. So I would have to wait yep. until I saw more information to make a decision here. And on top of that, ICE agents are some of the like worst. Uh, there's like, I mean, so they're, I think they're about on the same level as ATF for me. And um, the, the worst is DEA. They're subhuman. But uh, <laughs> so like one, I don't trust you, ICE dude. Sorry. Um, two, this is a thing. And like, look, cops shoot themselves when they draw their guns. They do it all the time. Right. I mean, you've, you've probably heard 
probably just in your life, you probably heard about two dozen stories of on the draw finger, finger pressure is too hard along the side of the, the gun. And a lot of times it's holster choice where these holsters like errantly train them to put finger pressure along the trigger as you're drawing and they blast themselves. They do it all the time. I believe this dude, I believe this ice agent just iced himself a little bit. I, I kind of agree. Now, one step further, I honestly think that six hour is probably going to end up liable here. And I think that one of the reasons, and you can tell me as uh, you can tell me as you, a lawyer and me, a stupid person, um, lawyers are stupid too. Six hour did a voluntary upgrade to fix mm-hmm. this issue. So I question was this Wait, fixed? Oh, that was the striker issue with the dropping, right? Like, yeah. And I'm assuming it's a similar issue, right? Like gun safe five trigger goes off when it's not supposed to, I don't know. You know, I I think, so here's what I see happening. It's going to be a horrible proof problem because the whole question is going to be, did he pull the trigger or not? Yeah. How are you going to prove that? The only way is video evidence. Like I don't see how SIG loses this unless there's video evidence. But they could be getting, we're talking about a huge, ridiculous discovery, right? In, in the lawsuit, this company is going to, this, this firm, is going to drag them over the hot coals. It's going to be demanding all kinds of crazy stuff, demanding access to this, that, and the other thing. It's going to cost them a lot of money to defend. What I would do if I were saying in, 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 in this situation is just settle. Uh, yeah, and that's probably what they're going to do. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. They're going to settle. And honestly, like I, I think that SIG and I've called them out a lot. They should have done a mandatory recall on the 320 to fix this yeah. issue. No, the voluntary upgrade is it's a cop out. Well, you know, it's like, see, I'm of two minds on the thing. One, I, I don't like the gun, right? I've shot them. I don't think they're good. But I do think that this is an overstated concern, um, right, with the, the whole striker drop thing. I don't quite understand how that relationship could equate to the gun going off on the draw unless you're doing something you're not supposed to. Yeah. Um, I just... I really just... In this situation, even though it's a 320, which I agree is like a bad gun yeah um i just i believe that this was operator negligence uh, um yeah i i agree i mean the chances are that yes said, so and, and what you were saying so them do offering the upgrade program that's a subsequent remedial net measure it actually can't really be used to prove that this one was defective um it's 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 a kind of a rule like that. They have to actually prove that, you know, they were aware of this defect that made this gun dangerous in this way. So if that, and this is me assuming that the upgrade was just for the dropping issue. I find it hard to, I guess if it's, um, it's a situation where if there's some kind because right, there's a seer relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And so obviously if it was able to go off and I'm making hand signals for you audio listeners, I'm, I'm making little sears with my hands. If this is able to go off by being dropped, then that must mean there's some situation where like the striker can jump off the sear or the sear rebounds or something, right? I, I find it hard to imagine a situation where you get like that kind of, you know, geometry problem that also happens by just like drawing the gun. You know what I mean? Unless it's like a very weak spring that could have failed and, you know, and like, and so like moving it could have dropped it either way. But I don't know. I have, I imagine that this gun is going to be the result of like this particular gun is going to be subject to some very, very intense forensic examination. Yeah, I, I can imagine that too. And, you know, here's the thing. There is a ton of P320s, M17s, M18s all in circulation. Like a ton. They have sold these things like gangbusters. You know what I don't hear of very often? I don't hear of them just magically going off. You know what I do hear of a couple times? Law enforcement, people that accidentally shoot themselves with the gun uh, in some way. And I'm not, I don't know A or B, but I'm saying that like I'm seeing a thing and it's only happening in a situation and I'm not hearing about it in the civilian world at all. Um, So yeah, I, 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 you know what they should do? What's that? At the trial, what they should do is they should put the gun on the stand and they, they should. should ask the gun if he just hates feds. Yeah. And and why are you so evil? Yeah. No, and then, and then, yeah, the gun will start cackling maniacally. <laughs> be like, I didn't want to be an ice gun. I wanted to be sent to, I don't know, some other country. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be on the side of a, of a soldier. Yeah. And here I am. No, I don't yeah. know, man. Yeah, it's like I don't get it. I, I somehow my I don't believe you is going off a lot. Yep. Yep. 
same. Yeah. Mostly because it's a nice agent. <laughs> Mostly just because I'm like, I don't want to blow it. Yeah. You're going to show me all by itself. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. And I'm sure all of those, uh, I'm sure all the evidence you planted just appeared. I was at the yeah. range and a dude was talking and he's like, yeah. And I was reholstering and it went off. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, you pulled the trigger. Pulled the trigger. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you pulled the trigger. You pulled the trigger. The, your shirt pulled the trigger. Your jacket pulled the trigger. Your or, pulled the, the trigger. or your leather holster pulled the trigger. Something. Yeah. Like yeah. it was in a class. I, it wasn't my class. I just happened to be there and he was like talking about it. And I looked down, he's got like burn marks and a, a hole clean through his pants. I'm like, Jim, any Christmas, man. You got lucky. Then, huh? You got real lucky. Yeah. But, 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 yeah no, that can, people have died. Oh yeah. There's a, you can strike a. Um, I think there's an artery that goes right in that zone. Well, there's right? the, the femoral on the inside, uh, inside front area, but yeah. like on that side, there's there's blood vessels, but there's nothing huge and life threatening. But the problem is, is the bullets tumble, and when bullets oh, no, tumble, yeah, you get the angle right. Yes, there's a, there's the one like behind your um, the popliteal the artery behind the yeah. knee uh, that leads down to the dorsalis pedis. Yeah, yeah, you can hit that one. <laughs> yeah, you could you could definitely they could tumble and they could they could take that out and I mean tourniquet yeah. is gonna is gonna really do a lot of a lot of good there. Well, there we go. But so yeah, it'll be interesting. I hope we get to you know these settlements are usually all quiet, but I, I I'm interested just to hear what happens with that. I think just think it'd be interesting. Well, Matt, at least at least we still have Larry Potterfield. We do. Uh, he exists, but no longer as CEO of what. Broadway. No, what? but it's okay. It's okay. He's still chairman of the board. Oh, gosh. He's chairman Thank of the board. Goodness. So, yeah. There has been... I mean, you guys all know Larry Potterfield and his foot fetish, right? <laughs> what? But you never... Okay, so there's this internet joke, and, I'm, and I love Larry Potterfield. His videos are very entertaining and stuff, but there's this thing where his, like, wife would appear in the... Um, in, in several episodes, and it would only be her feet. And each time she'd be wearing like different shoes that were that you could like see the toes. And the joke was like the joke was she'd be like, oh, another gun, but she'd be wearing a different pair of shoes. But the Internet took this and was like confirmed. Larry Potterfield's a foot fetishist. <laughs> like the only time women are showed in his videos, it's just their feet. Oh boy! <laughs> so look that up. There's like a compilation of just all of the like women's feet in, in the videos what the heck I, I have never actually heard that before that's hilarious <laughs> oh my god it's it's a riot and i mean it's certainly not true it's obviously just for a joke but i like rolling with the jokes um so but yeah so now the first ever non-family ceo out of the potterfield family is now mr matt fleming and he was hired on uh long ago in marketing and he kind of worked his way up the ranks and, and yeah they just explained that this they thought that this guy was a good guy and went with him for, wow. uh, yeah, for, for CEO. Looks, he looks very, I don't know. He doesn't look quite look like he, you put that up. Yeah. All right. Uh, doesn't quite look like he could, uh, replace the legend. I mean, he, he looks a little bit like a sports announcer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that just might be like the, the wide, uh, shouldered suit. Right. Yeah. He's, or maybe this is just a large man, but, he kind of looks like Larry Fodderfield a little bit, though. His head seems very small for his body. Yeah, which is not as goofy. Yeah, I don't know, but it seems like he's had really good success. I was reading about uh, yeah. what he's done in the in the twenty years that he's been there, like uh, increasing customer satisfaction, tremendous yeah. growth, winning a couple awards that I've never heard of before. Yeah, looks like good stuff. Uh, it says here his exceptional leadership qualities, attention to detail, and focus on serving customers make him the perfect choice to meet lead Midway USA in the future. And that's from Mr. Powerfield. Wow. Well, good for them. I wonder yeah, if it was like a hostile takeover. Wouldn't that be great? Like just Fleming was just like, come on, Potterfield, it's time to go. Yeah. So, no, it's like, if you don't go, I won't give you the rest of the feet picks. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, Perfect. Well, congrats, Fleming uh, and Potterfield. We, we will always miss you. Rest in peace. <laughs> he's still there. No, no, he's dead to me now. <laughs> no, no, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Fleming, you've got big, big, big shoes to fill in the, uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube situation. Exactly. I, I bet Potterfield still does that posthumously. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so last up now, remember, um, the, the defenders of the lawn, uh, yeah, man. I know no, this isn't the last stop. It's second to last stop. 
so yeah, following all of that like obvious nonsense in the the case involving the McCloskeys, who, as you guys remember, were the like vaporwave defenders of the lawn that uh, uh, stood on their porch with a like um, a, a like a two AR fifteen H bar and a Jimenez, uh, <laughs> which yeah was just fantastic. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, he had a finger on the trigger. My bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. Um, so, oh yeah, man, I just all that mess where yeah, St. Louis Circuit attorney was ousted as the prosecutor and um, all the stuff's going on. They've appointed a former U S attorney uh, as a special office prosecutor to oversee the case. And he's promising that he's going to take a whole new look at all of the evidence and start holistically, which is a good idea, but also why are you bothering? Because they've, you know, the, the t- top officials in the state have already made it very clear that if you go ahead and do this, they're just going to overturn it anyway. So why don't you just like, let them go. <laughs> yeah. What, do you have any insight on like what makes these prosecutors just like, like pit bulls and stuff like this that even like what was yeah. it, the governor was like, Nope, no matter what happens, I'm going to overturn it. Yep. So what it is, is that they're automatons. And so they, you can't actually blame them because every morning somebody goes up over to their house and takes a big key and puts it in their back and just goes click, 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 right? And then they just know what to do. You can't be mad at them. They, uh-huh. This is what they do. And I've met a lot of prosecutors in my life, maybe two I've met that were not complete automatons. Um, and yeah, the, if any of you are watching, it's you. You're the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they... It's, it does it's, – it's one of those things that is so rote and repetitive that, like, the emotion and the controversy will, will like, wear off on them. And so they just don't – they don't generally, like, see it that way. They, they see it more as a numbers thing, right, um, and more as, like, a, a – like, here's the elements of the crime. Did it happen? Okay, I can do this one because they did the check boxes. Yeah. Right? And not saying that they, they completed any crime here because I, I don't think they really did – but um, but yeah. So that's it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it, this story bothers me from the very beginning because these are not people that I would like. Like these, these are yeah. very, very progressive, like uh, politically people that I would probably not get along with at all. Yeah. And they would probably hate us. By the way. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I call them losers, but look at their house. But I still think they're losers. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, so I hate, I hate having to pick a side on this one. So. I don't, know. I, don't, I, mean, like, I don't have to pick a side. I'm just saying this is absurd. That's what I'm saying. Maybe a meteor will hit the courthouse and we'll, <laughs> we won't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, like at, at the end of the day, if, if I had nice things and it looked like my nice things might be at stake, there's no guarantee I wouldn't, you know, try to do something to protect my nice things. Uh, yeah. I, uh, like I don't criticize what they did. They, I, yeah. I think pe- more people should do stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I do criticize the the way that Miss McCluskey handled that and her weapon of choice, but yeah, uh, Jen, the you know the finger on the trigger business that's just a little, but you know they're not gun people, so you can't really, you know, they don't know any better. Yeah, like they 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 had a problem and they did what they thought they needed to do. And again, like I said, the people on the light rail, you know, the people who are trying to murder people all the time, uh, shoot them in the face is a pretty good. Uh, pretty good way to stop all that from happening. Um, and same thing here. Like people have the right to, de- to defend the, their property in most States and, uh, they have the right to defend their lives in, in most States. Uh, in Colorado, actually, we can't defend property with lethal force, but we can right. defend property with force. Yeah. So in Florida, we have something similar and it's very interesting the way those definitions, uh, wind up being turned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite, of which is people who like Floridians will often say that um, like there's this question that always happens is like what if another dog is attacking my dog can I you know would I be able to use my firearm to, to defend myself and my dog from and they always say no you can't use deadly force on right again to protect property because dogs are property yeah instead I'm always like if dogs are property how is it lethal force <laughs> it's not. No, that's the, it's, it's destructive true. force, right? Yeah. The moment you use the lethal force requires the ending of a human life, and if the law doesn't consider, he, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that these these things are not as simple as they first seem. Um, you do need to generally talk to a lawyer in your jurisdiction to to really know the ins and outs of it. But uh, you know, I'll just say that in situations that are as boily and and sensitive and and 
you know, just everything about what was happening to them. Look, the home, and this is something that in Florida, we, we our courts take very seriously. You don't mess with people's homes. All right. You don't go, you don't mess with it. it and basically, if you do, it's pretty much, you know, the moment you burgle, like break in to, to do something, your life is forfeit. And I think that honestly, just ha- given the sanctimony of, uh, of everything involved, just the, the presence of a gun is, is something, right? That's not exactly lethal force. It's a communication, right? It's a communication of capacity Mm -hmm. to project force over a a distance. I think that in that type of situation where bad actors may choose to use unlawful force, the communication of the capacity to project force against that bad bad action may be life-saving, right? It may prevent that from happening in the beginning. And uh, yeah, that's... Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, yeah, well said, well said. What do you think about that? What do you think about the you know? Call, I don't I don't like to say brandishing, right? Because brandishing kind of signals like a very you know yeah. nefarious use of a weapon. But what do you think of just the simple presence of a weapon as a mean of deterrence? You know that it is a really good question, and I always like tell myself that if I pull my gun. Like if I get to the point where I believe that I have to pull my gun because I'm in fear of serious bodily harm or death, uh, I, I, someone's getting shot. However, like that would be like the AI deciding uh, that my gun couldn't fire. Right. Like I think that's kind of ridiculous, but I always come from that point because I'm a good person and I don't want to, I don't want to kill anybody. I I will not hesitate should they try to kill me, but like Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to kill them. So if my gun comes out, it's only because I've gotten to the point where somebody's getting shot. However, if I come out and they like, whoa, 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 and like start running away or whatever, my gun's like not going to, uh, it is not going to shoot. It's not going to fire. It's not like, no nope, boss man said, if I come out, it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not going to do that. I'm going to make that choice and I'm going to make that choice not to take a life if I don't have to. Um, I, I think that if I was in a situation like that, where there was like a horde at like, so let's say, let's say I had a gate. I don't, right. But let's say there's a, I wish I had a gate. That'd be cool. That would but be cool. Uh, let's say there was a horde there. Right. And I step out on my, you know, lawn and I, I'm like, uh Oh, I can see the, like, I could see myself saying, you know what? I'm just going to put this on this sling on my shoulder. Just, just so everybody knows this is not the place to go. Right. Yeah. That's, that's my, I don't know. That's my, my general thought on the, on the matter. So yes. And there's so many different levels and layers of nuance here that I think it would be impossible for me to really like, I don't know, come up with, yes, this is how I feel about this specific topic because like, I don't believe that a gun is a tool of, of intimidation and, and what right. you just described would be intimidation, right? Like you would be intimidating the horde to, you know, F around and find out. Right. Well, so, I, so I think that like, like what they were doing was intimidation, like pointing it at them. Yes, absolutely. Without question, but maybe is even the presence. Intimidation. So yeah, that's an interesting discussion, right? Yeah. And then because open carry I too. Think a weapon, I think that there's a way of holding a weapon. And this is the way I always carry my weapons when I like, I'm going in a shop or whatever. I do the sportsman's carry where I put it under my arm. Mm-hmm. A gun, and when, you, when you carry a gun like that, it, people just feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, and I, I feel like, I feel like a slung rifle is, is a statement, but I don't think it's necessarily like in that type of situation. I think it's more of a, like, there is a gun here. Like that, that's you know, fair. Thing. Yeah, that's fair. But, uh, I kind of agree with you on that. I think you, you turn me around to that point because yeah, like I, I mean, when I see a slung rifle, I don't get it. I'm not scared or offended, but then again, I'm not some panty way social justice warrior that, you know, gets mad at everything in the universe. Um, but at the same time, I'm like very cognizant that it's there and like, okay, going to Walmart, going to Walmart in Colorado Springs, especially like you will see dudes open carrying. It's like a rite of passage here. You get your, you, you get a gun, you go open carry it in Walmart. That's, that's just yeah, the, the only thing. place I saw people open carrying when I lived in Alabama was Walmart. <laughs> yeah. 
so it's a thing. And like when I see them, I always try to see like what kind of gun it is because then I judge them. Yeah, but but I never like I'm never like nervous. Um, yeah, I mean so. Yeah, I'm never nervous, but I am like judgy, and it's like thanks, dude. You're making it so much easier on us, but. Yeah, I'm, and honestly, you're making me think about this this way about it too. And on top of that, and I'm sure some of our viewers are thinking this, having a gun does also make you a prime target if there are people who are really, really nefarious mm -hmm. intent, right? So that would be something that, like, if I was in their situation, I would think about. And honestly, the decision, and I didn't say I would choose to, like, take, you know, an AK over my shoulder and stand around. Mm -hmm. I think what I would probably do is go inside and lock the doors and have it. A hundred percent agree. And that's, I, guess, I think I was just going to make that point that it's so hard for me to, to, to think about these situations because I would not be in that situation, right? Like, I'm not going to stand out front. Like, if they start yeah. throwing crap through my windows, then, yeah, like things will escalate very, very quickly, especially if they're like flaming things. Uh, because that, that is, you know, that, that would make me believe that I'm in fear of death or, fear, or serious bodily harm. The hardest part for you would be which belt fed you wanted to go with. <laughs> right. I'm like, do I want the nine mil machine gun, the 45 machine gun, the five, five, six machine gun, the 308 machine gun, the 458 SOCOM machine gun, yeah. that one, that's the one I would pick. I think if I knew I was going to go down, like I knew that it wasn't going to, they, the chances were not good. It would have to be the show shot. Oh, man. <laughs> that's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not getting out of this. <laughs> that's like rolling dice with both hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's interesting because, you know, uh, Florida man's house swarmed <laughs> the last stand with a 1915 machine gun. <laughs> Yeah, the McCloskey's like. I mean, like we're we're being quite callous about this. Of course, we're joking. We we would never, you know, take pleasure in doing any sort of thing. We're no. just we're making fun of the ridiculous. Frankly, this is all related to the ridiculousness of this trial, yeah. right? Of this real case, and and we're kind of just like waxing about how preposterous the whole situation is yeah and the way i feel about the mccloskeys i'm like they, they did nothing wrong they they did what they thought they needed to do there was like a a, a riot basically i mean yeah like i don't care it's people that were in a place that they shouldn't have been private property rights do exist they went out on their front lawn they did what they thought they needed to do and i don't care about all the pedanticness of like finger on trigger and blah 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 like i get it they did it it doesn't really matter they're not gun people they're not going to know the four rules probably so like you screaming the four rules at them just makes you sound like a clown um yep it i makes you just seem yeah, yeah, I'm not going to put my finger on the trigger. I'm not going to point the gun at somebody unless I intend uh, to respond with deadly force. But yeah, and like you said, like I, you know, I was staging that hypothetical, but I am the guy who would go inside, say, <laughs> and maybe from a nice like they had a, that house had plenty of vantage points that they could have been at, right? Yeah. So if, if they were tactically sound, that's what they would have done, but. You know, but they did, and it happened, and it's over, and it happened, and here's the question is, did they do something that is culpably wrong? And I think they may have done some things that were not terribly intelligent, but nothing that is criminally culpable, in my opinion. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Yeah, so we put a, it solved, a uh, new special attorney, you can just, you know, send us a check. Yep, yep. Uh, Turn the lights uh, off on your way out, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, and all right, this last one. Really interesting and, and a really cool thing. This is actually one of the first topics I wrote about when I started writing about gun law. Uh, and it's, North Carolina is considering loosen, loosening their prohibition on church carry. So the North Carolina Senate Judiciary Committee has issued a favorable report for SB 43 in the state, which would expand the ability of citizens to carry while attending religious services. And so this is an, uh, something that has always just boggled my mind, that... At some point, it, there was a switch in this country where it went from you must carry arms to church in the event of attack by raiders, right? And there are early colonial statutes that required that able-bodied men carry a pistol and some shot to church. And then we went to, but you can't have a gun in church. It's like dirty. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the first articles I ever wrote, and it was about how guns in church are not dirty and how we need to get rid of these laws. And in fact... In the Bible, it talks about how uh, the tabernacle was guarded, right, by armed men. Like, it is defensive arms are clean. Uh, and it's at least, you know, from a, and people might 
you know, I'm sure there's all kinds of different religions out there. I've heard there's at least three, but uh, people, people might disagree with me, but in my faith, the way I practice it, defensive arms that are purely used for defense are clean. They are good to go anywhere. But for some reason, we have this orthodoxy in a lot of the American South that prohibits you from carrying a gun in church. And then guess where they go and do the shootings at? Yeah. So uh, it's weird. Uh, like here in Colorado, like we, we, we allow guns in churches. Like uh, I think when Jack Wilson did what he did in Texas, I, I started looking at it a little bit more and I was like, oh, I just thought everyone had this. I thought it was normal. And we've had new life. We had a a shooting like literally 23 minutes from where I'm sitting right now. uh, It it happened and uh, a concealed carrier uh, killed the, killed the murderer. And it was a great thing. Um, uh, People died, but you know, the, the killer dying is always a good thing. It's never clean. Yeah, never. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. This, this is good. Like, I think this is great. And the reason I think it's great, especially, is because it empowers private property owners to set their own security policy. It's almost as if that's the way it's been supposed to be. Exactly. That's exactly what should happen. So church, not a church, private property owners should be able to decide that on their own. And we can decide. You don't decide, need a law for that either. What's that? You need a law for that. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's Guess what? It's called trespass. If they say no guns and you come in with a gun, you're trespassing. Yeah. Need any statutes for that? It's clean. It's it's old as it's old as English legal society. Like that's that's all we need. We don't need all this crap. We don't need all these specific rules. If the church says no guns for whatever reason, no guns. It's up to them. If you carry your gun, either risk trespass or go to a different one. Yeah. End of the day. Totally, like, really. totally agree. I did go to a church in Alabama that like. And you know, I didn't. I never looked at what the. I'm. I'm sure it was legal, but um, they. It was after the, you know the, some of those high profile church shootings happens, and like the pastor was like trying to like figure out. It was like the next day, trying to figure out how to like encourage us to carry guns without like straight up saying, "Please bring your guns." <laughs> uh, he was just like, yeah. He was like, I think he said something like, you know, something like that happened over there, and you know they are not allowed to carry guns in church. And, you know, I, I do hope that there are members of our flock that would act if you know, it was like, it was so awkward. And in my head, I was like, in my head, I was thinking the whole, th- the whole time I actually, I was, I was sitting next to my buddy and I just looked over him and I clicked on my P99. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, We're good. yep, we good. Everything's yeah. fine. Um, Carl Walters got us. Heck yeah, man. I, yeah, like I think that's how it should be. And like if your church doesn't allow it, like, yeah, it's private property. Um, don't go there. Go somewhere else. Risk yeah. trespass or go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. And yeah, never, don't, don't, I don't actually recommend you risk trespass. Just go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we all are responsible for the own choices we make. Understand the results of those choices should, mm-hmm. it, should it go south uh, and then yep. make your choice based on that. Yep. I've actually trained uh, church teams in, in gun shooting tactics and also medical. And, really? Yeah. And I'm not a religious dude, but like I, it was to me though, it was like, it was an honor to be able to, uh, to, to be a part of something like that because I think it's a very noble and profound thing to protect uh, people who are worshiping and people yeah. who are there for the, for the, all the reasons that people go to church. Like to me, that was like, it was, it was a, a privilege that I got to do that. No. And I mean, that must be a good, church that's serious about their flock you know that's serious about the safety and and security of their um members right and uh the way i've always the way i i've always thought about it is is you should just and this is my faith right you 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 know anyone any of you out there might be a different flavor christian i heard that there's at least two different flavors but uh, (laughs) but um like the way i view it is that i don't think my my pastor should be focused on you know, the scripture should be focused on teaching the flock. I don't think he should have to think about the safety. I think it should, I think like, if that's something that we can give back, then I think that's my duty. It's, you know, I can give, I give whatever I can to the church. And so one of the things I can give is that I am of a sound mind. I can legally carry the gun. And so I do. And, you know, and and that's a duty I take upon myself, right? Because I care about the flock. Yeah. Totally, yeah. 100%. And great. any of you out there, if you can, don't think of guns in church as a dirty thing. Defensive arms 
are clean. They do not have, there is no like evil to them. They are, they are just as long as they are defensive arms, right? I, I do think it's different. I, I do think arms that are intended, you know, and that's user. I don't mean like an AK or whatever, right? Um, I think if you intend for the arm ever to be used in an offensive way, that you shouldn't bring that to church. But if you have your your carry pistol or whatever that you consider only a defensive weapon, you should take it with you. You should. Yeah. <laughs> Mass killer comes up. Matt pulls out a shosha. <laughs> this is my defensive shosha. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Here we go. Jammed, but there's only some mass killer left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the <is> like, Woof. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, so I think yeah, that's we all. Have two companies to talk about. We do. We do. Uh, why don't you start us off? Who you want to talk about first? All right. So let's take a look at primary arms. All right. Primary arms. Free Boom. beanie sale. What more do I have to say? I just got a couple of those beanies in the mail, and I didn't even know why I got them, but I got them. Free beanie. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Reverb is great. So um, I was trying to think before the show, uh, like what was kind of related to the show. And you know what it is? Polymer 80 stuff. Um, so Primary Arms sells Polymer 80 stuff. And I saw something that they had that I thought was really cool. They have the serialized PFS9 frame, which will basically take Glock 43 innards. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's serialized, so you it has to be transferred to an FFL and all that, all that good stuff. And they have a ridiculous sale. Uh, 135 is crossed out and yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can say the sale. I like, so, Oh, you can't say it. I, I get, I'm saying it. 119. That's the price. Oh, yeah, no. And they've got the regular old one, the, the nine forties that, you know, they got, they got all of them in stock, which is kind of impressive for right now. But honestly, like if you're the type that, doesn't want to mess around right with with doing all the final fitting and stuff this is a great option for you um i think and it's it's just kind of cool um they they really feel nice i know you've shot quite a few of them oh yeah um they're really nice feeling frames very you know pre-stippled and everything like that so that's that's dope we just had uh we were shooting a glock the other day at the range or uh cameraman steve brought his new glock and he's like oh man when i when i press out like my front side is low it's like yeah grip angle happens to a lot of people I, i'm very similar to you in that aspect i've trained my way out of it but it's absolutely a thing that happens but the polymer 80 stuff has more of a 1911 grip angle which fits me better that's why i shoot mmps uh because they have that pr- very very similar grip angle so i love polymer 80 it's like it's actually made me appreciate uh Glock similar, Glock adjacent firearms. Yeah, same. No, and honestly, most of the the Glock rounds I've put put through a firearm were through polymer eighties. Um, and yeah, the grip angle thing. A lot of people say that it's like you know boomer BS, but I'm someone who and Walthers have their own specific grip angle, and I've like gotten used to that. And whenever I hold a Glock or a 1911, I'm like ah, weird. So I think that might be one of the reasons I've, I've stuck so closely with them. But yeah, but yeah, I, I shoot the Palmer 80 well. Uh, Same. It's, uh, it's a good thing. It is. Um, and you can go to frn.deals slash PA uh, to find out more about Palmer 80. And what's, what's the next company? Okay, then we've got a Patriot patch company. Boom. Patches. They don't sell eye patches. I no. looked, but... They got the different kind, the ones that you guys like. What if they had an eye patch patch that adhered to your eyebrow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would be terribly tactical advantageous, but it would be funny. Yeah, it, and, would, uh, it would be cool. Those are the type of guys who would do something like that, so maybe <laughs> we should tell them. They are. The Patch of the Month Club is actually like my favorite thing. Oh, dang. Oh, look at that one. This is oh, the, I need that. This is this month. We'll be getting oh, it next month. Yeah, I'll be getting, oh, that's awesome. I've got, do you have a 180? Uh, I have a... You have a, a brown L's. I have a, the brown L's BRN yeah. 180 right here. Yeah. Oh man, I've I've got a, a Howa. Um, I love my little Arbalite. Um, have you ever? The, the orange ones don't shoot anywhere near as good as the brown L ones. I'll say, but uh, I it's just so cool, and you know, you you think of it in this exact Im- image as it's being uh, presented. You know, with the short mags and everything. This is a perfect patch. I love this patch. It, it's it's actually. This patch strikes me in a couple different areas. Like I love the design as always. I do think that the the 180 is is a pretty cool gun, or I'm sorry, the AR18 
And I also think that this patch is a little bit funny because basically that little, my little arm of light was a folk song that was sung uh, and became very much associated with the IRA Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, and and the things that that they did. Uh, And that, Come out, you black and tans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this whole patch is like, it hits Great. me on several different levels of coolness yeah. and interest, I guess, historical significance. Yeah, no, the, um, the, so yeah, the 180 is the semi-auto version, which is, uh, that's a lot of what they had under there. And that's, that's actually the reason I sought out a Japanese Hawa AR-180, because that is what they wound up with in, in the most numbers over in, um, during those times, but so yeah, it's a very handsome gun, and with a just the patch is just perfect. Just like Sean said, this is this is great. If you're gonna, I mean, if you're into patches and you're into uh, small arms history, this is a good one. <laughs> and I actually just knew some history for like the first time in any show that I've ever been on. I actually knew oh. the history of like my little arm light and the IRA and how it, it's only because I had to research it all to do our video on the beer and. Uh, 180. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I get one still. I've got the. I shot that 300 blackout one. That's what mine is. That's what mine is. Ooh. It's so cool. Oh man, I was just slapping. It was at you know at um the Gundy's. I was slapping the hundred hundred yard target with 300 black subsonics. Yep. And I was like, oh, it's so choice. Yeah, I think that was actually Roy's personal gun too. But yeah, it, it's great, man. Uh, that I got the 300 blackout. It's baller. Uh, I think that'll do. You go to patriotpatch.co, use coupon code TWIG10, T-W-I-G-10. That'll save you money. Matt, uh, it's yours to wrap up here, buddy. All right, guys. Hey, thank you again for coming. Uh, we really appreciate y'all checking out the show, whether you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, be sure to check out Firearms Radio Network, where we've got all kinds of other programs you're going to love. But most importantly, got to remember, anything more than minimum compliance is self-regulation. We will see you next week.